Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Kelly Sparks, a.k.a. Redbeard. So tonight, uh, I know I said I was going to have a guest on and that I was probably going to post this one over the weekend, but that never came to fruition. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this one for you solo. So tonight, we have the final offering. Actually, if I go out and purchase it, I found another Douglas Lang that just hit the shelves here locally called the Epicurean. I think it's a Lowland Lowland whiskey blend. So I might go get it. Might not. We'll see what happens. Uh, but this one is Big Pete. Right on the back of the bottle, it says, Historically, we would call this Whisper It. A vatted malt. It may be blonde, but it has a big peak kick. So, what exactly, you may ask, is a vatted malt? It's what the Scotch whiskey industry has historically called a marriage of only malts. At a punchy 40 ppm, phenol parts per million, this small batch bottling carries a big peaty phenolic Beachy, oceanic, slightly ashy selection of malts only from the island of Isla. From where the Lang family directors hail. So that's cool. All of these ally, these lusty and robust Isla malts selected for Big Peat with the fact that no chill filtration takes place, a more old-fashioned traditional approach, and you will detect a massive application of its sweet peat, sooty chimneys, creosity, beach huts, and terry ropes. Qualities on the nose, palate, and finish. So this one is bottled at 46% ABV. Uh, it says the whiskeys that it came from were Ardbeg, Coila, Bowmore, Port Ellen, and that's it. So, all right. I'm not going to bother reading off the website because it pretty much says the same thing. Um, so on the nose, oh yeah, just phenolic, sea time, ashiness, just smoke and soot, a little bit of sweetness in there, you gotta, gotta pick through it. I like that. So that one's got. I might have to go in again. Go in for another one. There was a malty, chocolatey type flavor that I got. Very faint. So it's almost like a smoky strawberry chocolate. And not like a malt chocolate, but like a chocolate milkshake chocolate. Uh, hints of uh, some different berries in there. Like I said, strawberry. Definitely the smoke and soot, but get some sea salt. I actually like this one. I think I like this one the most out of the Douglas Lane. Of course... I'm partial to Isla Scotch, so it's not surprising for me to pick this one higher. It definitely has more robust flavors than the other offerings, although they are good in their own respect and regard. Um, this one has definitely got a more powerful presence. Mm. Yeah. That one's just a. Uh, I mean, it's no, it's no Lagavulin, but there's only one Lagavulin. Um, but for the price, uh, 
46 percent and i want to say this one was around 55 to 60 dollars here locally i mean it's i would probably just go with lefroy 10 year old or even Ardbeg 10. Um, it's good but it's still a blended scotch a no age statement blended scotch so i'm not i don't hate it i like it out of i like the best out of the the series but if i had to make a choice i would just go with honestly i'd probably pick uh lefoy quarter cask for the that's probably one of your best bang for the bucks if that's the type of scotch you're looking for or if you can find that lager an eight-year-old uh, that's a good one. Like you can see in the glass, it's just barely, barely just yellowish. I mean, I mean, it's like a light tan. So, yeah. Honestly, I'd probably go with the Lagavulin Eight or the. Uh, yeah, I mean any of the Lefroigs, and it just there's really no point in blending Isla Scotch. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Uh, yeah, I like it. I, I would rate it a little bit higher, maybe seven point five, seven point six. Uh, it's it's okay, but if you're gonna drink peated scotch then you might as well just go straight to the source and bypass the blend it's just my opinion but, oh well i'm gonna read off some tasting notes for you see if i got any of these opens fresh salty and clean on the nose developing to sweet malt dried over peat on the palate detect ashes sweet tar beaches and smoking chimneys i guess i didn't get the smoking chimneys and the smoke the finish is long and lingering replicating the palate with salty, tangy licorice, smoke, bonfire ashes, and a phenolic quality. So, I mean, it's it's a good scotch, but like I said, if you're going to just drink peated scotch, go straight to the source. I mean, it's... It is what it is. So, I'll go 7.6 on it. Uh, check it out. Try it. My personal opinion, if you're going to drink a scotch of this style, just go get you a Lefroy 10 or Ardbeg 10, Lagavulin 8, if you can find one. I mean, if you want to spend 100 bucks or, depending on the market, I've seen it as low as 60, upwards of 100 to 120 for Lagavulin 16. That's probably one of the best scotches you'll find that's readily available. Peated scotch, other than Lefroy 10 and Ardbeg 10. So, if you're uh, adventurous, if you're the adventurous type, this is right up your alley. So, check it out. Let me know. Give me some feedback. Like always, check out the Beardy Dudes podcast on Instagram. Uh, you can find us on just about any podcasting app. We, uh, we do a whiskey review, and right now we're doing the same Buffalo Trace series, but you get a couple of other different opinions on it. Uh, I'm at Son of Thor 3 on Instagram. And uh, I think that's all I got. Yeah. Like always, drink some whiskey, share it with your friends and family. Be safe and have a nice day. Good night.